Coming up on Roadshow News Recap, we cover the biggest reveals from the Shanghai Auto Show. There's the new Volkswagen ID6, which is an all-electric SUV with, get this, three rows of seats. Audi's latest design study is called the A6 e-tron, and it really wows. Plus, Lincoln unveiled a new concept sedan. Yes, Lincoln, and yes, it's a sedan, and I think Sean and I are sure to argue about that one. And speaking of Sean, my friend, I gotta ask, what's your overall impression of the Shanghai show? I mean, what's an auto show? I've, I've pretty much forgotten. I am so sorry about that. I was muted. <laughs> sorry about that, Craig. Uh, we had a ton of new stuff at the Shanghai show. Clearly, automakers were super excited to get to something in person, and there was a ton of new stuff for us to talk about. Yes. In fact, it was hard to narrow things down for what we wanted to cover on the show today. But uh, if you are watching the live broadcast, make sure you drop your questions or comments right in the chat, and we will address those as the show goes on. Plus, we are running a poll, a live poll right now. There's actually a Vimeo link in the YouTube chat. So if you go ahead and click on that, you'll be able to vote on uh, some of the cars that are in there. So hit that link, vote early, and vote often, and we'll get, right going, get going right here on the show, which we're going to start talking about that Lincoln concept, which you could argue perhaps the star of the show this year. Sean, what do you think? Yeah, it was surprising to see Lincoln bring a sedan somewhere, just because we know a few years ago, Ford and Ford owns Lincoln. Uh, they said they're going to get rid of sedans. So here in the U.S., there will be no more sedans. But over in China, there's still a huge, huge market for luxury sedans. So Lincoln debuted this Zephyr reflection concept. Uh, Craig, you're, you're a Ford guy, so that Zephyr name I know means something to you uh, and perhaps some people yes. who remember the modern Zephyr. Um, but this thing, it, it looks really good. And uh, I know you're not the biggest fan. me feels kind of like a step backwards. I really like what Lincoln is doing right now. They've all of their vehicles kind of they, they've adapted the same sort of styling theme to them, which I think is super handsome. And some of the details on this car are a little bit they seem a little busy, maybe a touch fussy. I don't know the grill I don't like as much as on some of the current Lincoln's. So kind of a step backwards. Although, I mean, what do you think, Sean? You I think you're a bigger fan of it than I am. Yeah, I, I think, and I, I do appreciate, you know, I'm actually quite sad that the Continental is going away because I think that car in its own right is actually a very good looking car, super gorgeous, simple lines. This is definitely busier, but it's also interesting. It, it's, uh, it, it's, it's just, and you know, I don't know if my opinion is skewed because, you know, we want to see new sedans from Ford and Lincoln and, you know, any other automaker that said they're, they're done with sedans, you know, so maybe it's just some excitement that, wow, look, look at this new sedan and like, look what could have been. Uh, but mm -hmm. I really, I don't the MKZ uh, would have uh, stuck around. I know it, right? And the Fusion, its last generation, was a great car. It looked beautiful. had million-dollar styling. The thing looked like a freaking Aston Martin. And Ford sold a lot of them, but apparently hundreds of thousands a year, they just can't make a profit, I guess, doing that. It, it, I, I don't understand why, but <laughs> they obviously discontinued it in the U.S. And doesn't look like there's any hope that this Lincoln Zephyr reflection concept is going to come here to the U.S. either. It sounds like it's China only. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct, Craig. This car is not coming to the United States. There are no chances of it. Don't get your hopes up. Don't cross your fingers and don't stay up late at night worrying about it because it's not going to happen. 
Yeah, yeah. But uh, looking at the YouTube chat, uh, Tommy K says, love it. Sorry, I disagree with it being a step backwards. Now, one's entitled to their own opinion. Um, I don't care for the exterior. However, the work that they did on the cabin of this car is freaking amazing. It's got basically a pillar to pillar screen, which looks really cool. But the rest of the design of the interior um, is very tasteful, very clean. There's a push button shifter that you get on the center of the uh, of the center stack that you can see in there. And then there's sort of like uh, a Lincoln star motif they've embossed on some of the leather on the door panels. And I gotta say, the cabin looks beautiful. And that two spoke steering wheel, super cool as well. It, if they could bring that interior to a, a different sedan in the US with a slightly different exterior, I would be all over it. Yeah, I said when I first saw this car and uh, uh, we wrote about it this week when it debuted, it they somehow got that uh, Lincoln Aviator Navigator swagger and packaged it into this interior for a sedan. And I, I hope that what we see here, even though we're not going to get this car, I hope that uh, interior ethos uh, comes to the U.S. and for future Lincoln vehicles, because, I mean, it really is gorgeous. Um, it's just a total contrast from, you know, the Mach-E isn't a Lincoln, but the Mach-E has a tall vertical uh, giant touch screen where this just feels classier. You know, I'd rather see go uh, uh, horizontal rather than vertical. It just kind of emphasizes the width, makes the cabin look really large. And I like that a lot. Mm hmm. Very true. Very true. But uh, for now, at least this is only a concept, even though I mean, nothing about the design is 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 radical at all there's no reason they shouldn't be able to build this car uh same story with the next vehicle on our list it should be a production model as well the volkswagen id6 suv didn't they just introduce something called the id4 what is the id6 now yeah this one's just for china as well uh as are a lot of the vehicles we saw there this week uh this you could consider a larger volkswagen id4 this has three rows of seats, like we mentioned before. Uh, Volkswagen hasn't said if they even thought about bringing it to the U.S., but first and foremost, this model is specifically to cater to uh, how the Chinese like to use their vehicles. Uh, a lot of chauffeurs, more back seat room. That's why the third row is very important for this vehicle. Um, they also didn't give a lot of specifications about it, but we do know the orange one you're looking at there on your screen is the uh, the Cross, the ID6 Cross. Very weird name that comes from a Volkswagen concept <laughs> yes. car they showed. Uh, that's supposed to be the more rugged one, Craig. Then the purple one you're looking at is the ID6X, which is supposed to be the sporty one. Um, they haven't said if there are any uh, engineering tweaks to make these things uh, make more sense, you know, because right now I actually think the orange one looks sportier than the purple one, personally. I was going to say, if they were going for rugged and sporty, I think they failed on both <laughs> accounts. Yeah, it's, 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 I don't understand. Those those wheels on the Cross just look sportier. You know, I guess I can get it from the ID6X. Those, those wheels look sporty, too. You know, but that's really kind of the major differentiation other than the, you know, the front bumpers are a little bit different. The rear bumpers have some design tweaks, um, but yeah, there's not a lot to differentiate them. So we'll have to wait and see if we get more information and, and maybe Volkswagen will change its tune and say, hey, you know what? We're going to, you know, do, do Americans want to see this? You know, they may. We don't know. I mean, Americans are crossover crazy. I mean, the notion that Volkswagen hasn't considered selling the ID6 in North America is kind of crazy to me. Like, I would think that would be their number one or number two market for the car, but who knows? Um, do we know the size of the ID6? Is it is it the same as an ID4, or have they stretched it? Uh, it's it's a little bit bigger. Uh, again, we don't have uh, a lot of the. Uh, what do you want to call it? Finer specs. Uh, they didn't even show us a photo of the interior for this car yet, which I thought was kind of strange. Insanity. Um, yeah, it, I don't understand, you know, automakers. We love to see the cars, you know, so show them to us. <laughs> even if we're not going to get it, you know, maybe maybe people yeah. will fall in love with it watching the show. <laughs> but uh, the only technical specs we got, Craig, uh, are 300 horsepower from both of these. And Volkswagen says it'll go to... 
uh, 62 miles per hour from a standstill in 6.6 seconds. Uh, they're targeting performance. 300. Yeah. yeah, yeah, pretty good. And, and they're talking 365 miles of range uh, on China's NEDC cycle, um, like the European version that's a little more liberal than the EPA cycle. So yeah. if Volkswagen decided to bring it here, we're probably talking about 300 miles of range, a little more, a little less, uh, somewhere in that ballpark. Mm -hmm. Which isn't too bad. That's about what the Mach-E Mustang tops out at, right? Obviously, you can get some yeah. Tesla vehicles with more range than that. But 300 Yankee units of driving distance on a charge, it's pretty good, especially mm -hmm. for a vehicle with three rows of seats. Yeah, absolutely. And and that's what I was going to say. If you know the Mach-E really isn't a good comparison because that's a much smaller vehicle, uh, you know, and again, we really wouldn't know that final figure unless the EPA rated it. And as far as we know, everybody, the EPA will never have its hands on this vehicle from what Volkswagen has said. So if you love it, you'd mm. have to go to China. If you don't want to go to China, then you'll have to look at an ID, ID4. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, did you mention also no interior photos, but they do say it's going to have a 12 inch touchscreen and no physical buttons apparently. So again, yes. no interior photos. We can't actually show you that, but take our word for it. Volkswagen said a gigantic screen, which is very much yes, in keeping Volkswagen, with industry trends right now. Correct. Yes. They're saying a giant screen. Uh, we'd love to show it to you. There's nothing like, uh, understanding what the car looks like than two people describing it to you. But anyway, they're also yeah. saying there really aren't many buttons and there will be uh, some sort of artificial intelligent uh, uh, voice assistant that will make up for that, Craig. So I really, really hope that's a smart voice assistant because it's nice to have some physical buttons no matter how big of a screen you have. A lack of physical buttons, in my opinion, is a huge mistake. Like Cadillac learned that lesson. Lincoln even learned that lesson a little bit before Cadillac did. Like touch sensitive stuff, it just don't work real good. I mean, you need the tactile feel when you reach out to, uh, you know, adjust the radio volume. Like in Hondas that had that stupid slider, everybody hated that thing. Everybody. And it's just like, there's no need to reinvent the wheel. Just have a physical control. You can see it. You can reach over and feel it without looking at it. You know what you're doing. It's just much easier. So if they're talking about only touch controls, that might be a mistake. We will see. I I, I want buttons in my car. I am by no means a, a, a against a touch screen. It's, it can be very helpful. Apple CarPlay is a wonderful addition to modern vehicles or Android Auto, whatever uh, uh, operating system you use on your phone. But seriously, just to have a knob if I'm cold to turn up the heat or something, that, that there's nothing nothing that works better. Yeah, or ha you, so you don't have to dig through, you know, four different layers of menu structure to get to the seat heater controls or something. It's just right there on the console. Click. Now my butt's getting warm. Done. <laughs> Very easy. Absolutely. Craig loves his butt warm, everybody. You heard the man here. Even in summer. I crank those seat heaters up. No. Uh, so our next car, so no interior photos of this Volkswagen and no interior photos of the Audi A6 e-tron concept. What a coincidence. But that's the next vehicle on our list. This is apparently an exterior design study only. And man, what a looker. Yeah, this looks pretty darn good. Audi's saying it doesn't precede a specific production model. So this... Could end up being nothing. Um, don't do that, Audi. Like, please incorporate this <laughs> into some sort of production car because I really, really dig this car's silhouette. It it finally looks fresh. I've said before, um, a lot of new Audis just kind of have this, you know, stale. It looks kind of like it did a few years ago. Look about them. This I feel yes. like ties in that Audi look but it kind of brings it into the future that I haven't seen with some of their more recent concepts. There's just something about this car that it looks production friendly, but it also looks futuristic. Yes, exactly. There are definitely definite Audi design cues on this vehicle that are familiar, but they've sort of reinterpreted them. Like the grill is a slightly different shape. The the back end, the way the tail lights, which Evan is showing right now, the way those are designed um, are slightly different from what you get on current Audis. It's a, it's a beautiful sort of reinterpretation of their current design theme, which this car is quite a looker. Um, and it's, it's, 
It's interesting because Audi was sort of the brand that, at least in my memory, really kicked off the, the trend of the giant grill, right? They've got, they sort of started that 10 or 15 years ago when they introduced that single frame, that grill on the front of their cars. And now we see a whole bunch of other automakers sort of following it, that trend from I mean, Genesis. We'll get to a Genesis concept or a Genesis car later in the show. Genesis has huge grills these days as well. But it's interesting to see Audi reinterpret that look. And they're doing it very well because they're claiming drag coefficient of just 0.22 on this vehicle, which is pretty low. Um, which is, of course, a huge benefit if you're going all electric and range. I mean, range is, of course, a huge concern with electric cars. Uh, so to get that drag coefficient as low as you can is only going to help the driving range. Um, they're also talking about cameras for side view mirrors, which is a great idea. We can't have them here, Sean, because as you know, we're not allowed to have nice things because of the uh, federal vehicle safety standards and all of that. And then the vehicle also rolls on 22-inch mm. wheels, which for a concept, that ain't huge, really. No, I, I kind of have a funny feeling that even though they're saying this, it doesn't directly preview something that we're looking at something here. Like this could influence the next A6 or maybe the next A7. You know, I could see both of those things. And again, I hope it does uh, because there's there's something about this car that it, it's very appealing. Uh, the I, I enjoy looking at it. They again, they didn't give us a whole lot of details on it, you know. So we'd love to learn more, especially if there is, you know, some twinkle in some Audi engineer's eye that knows that this this does preview something. You know, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, but I I think it's a very good concept car overall, and it's one of my favorites that we saw in Shanghai. Definitely, definitely. It's built on the Volkswagen Group PPE scalable EV platform. And they're uh, claiming it has approximately 100, and 100 kilowatt hours of energy storage, which for this non-existent car could result in a driving range of 435 miles. It's not clear what sort of test cycle that would be on. I would assume the European one, which is a little bit friendlier, of course, than the one we have in the U.S., but we don't know for sure. And then uh, twin electric motors with about 469 horsepower and 590 pounds of torque. And that's, of course, one thing, a major theme with all EVs is major amounts of torque because electric motors give you a crap ton, let's just say, of twist right at zero uh, speed. So if this were a real vehicle, it would, I would hazard to bet, be pretty fun to drive. Yeah, absolutely. There's If, if no one has driven an electric car or even a plug-in hybrid at that, uh, you don't have to go full EV to get the experience and you punch it and you're on all just electric battery mode in your plug-in or if it's just an EV, it it's hilariously it's hilariously quick. It will feel like the quickest car you ever drove until about 30 miles an hour if it's a you know rather pedestrian vehicle. You know, we're not talking a sports car, you know. I, I think back to my Chevy ludicrous Volt mode. and that was yeah, 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 yeah. Not a Chevy Volt. There was nothing ludicrous about a Chevy Volt. But uh, that was the quickest car to 30 miles per hour I've ever owned. <laughs> yeah, right. The only thing ludicrous about the Volt was, at least in your use case, the uh, the amount of fuel you purchased for it. Because didn't you like not fill it up for like two years or something crazy? <laughs> there was a solid eight months, I think, where that car didn't get a tank of gas. And if, if no one's ever uh, drove a Volt, uh, the second generation Volt, I'm not sure if the first gen did this, but a GM would install like a pop-up message that would be like, hey, the car is running the engine because it's been so freaking long. So we got to burn a little bit of gas to keep things, you know, going okay. <laughs> so that would kick on more often than I would stop at a gas pump to fill it up. That's crazy. But hey, if you are just joining us, welcome to Roadshow News Recap, where we dissect and discuss the most important car-related story of the past week, or in this case, stories, as we cover the reveals from the Shanghai Motor Show. You can join us for the live broadcast every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern right here on the Roadshow YouTube channel. And of course, if you are watching the live broadcast, drop your questions or comments in the chat box, and we'll do our best to address those as the show goes on. And of course, if you're watching the recorded version, Thank you very much. And while you're at it, make sure to vote in this week's live poll where we're asking you what your favorite Shanghai concept car is. And you can choose between the Audi A6 e-tron and the Lincoln Zephyr Reflection uh, concept that we just talked about. 
And then there's the Honda SUV e prototype, which we will get to in just a few moments. Our producer, Evan, will drop that link right in the YouTube chat box so you can vote. I already voted. You should as well. And, of course, we will share those results just a little bit later in the show. Like I said, get your questions in there. And we do have a question, Sean, from Tech Guy asking, do you think Lincoln will bring the Zephyr back to the U.S. market? I love my hybrid and always wished they offered a plug-in. Thoughts on that, Sean? Yeah, I hate to burst your bubble, tech guy, wherever you may be in the world, but it's not going to happen. <laughs> it, it just isn't. At least in the uh, near Ford term. And Li- yeah. yeah, it's it's not, unless we're talking maybe in, who knows, 30 years and there's a generational shift where people are like, you know what, SUVs are fuddy-duddy, I don't like them anymore, and all of a sudden everyone wants a sedan. You know, that could happen, sure. Yeah. Uh, you know, as younger people enter the car buying market and, you know, the people who grew up with SUVs don't want them. Uh, so maybe in a long time from now, but if you're thinking in like the next two, three, five, even 10 years, I'd say chances are slim to none, my friend. Sorry to say. Yeah, I agree 100 percent, Sean. As much as I'd love to see a Zephyr, a Continental and a town car in the Lincoln lineup. I don't think that's going to happen <laughs> this decade or even beyond. But Wishful if you do thinking. want a sedan, yeah. If you do want a sedan, there are still sedans available. And, uh, you know, one automaker that's doing a great job at uh, building them is Genesis. And they showed off the very unimaginatively named Genesis Electrified G80. What does that mean? I can't imagine. <laughs> what does it mean? Could it be an oh, EV? Boy, I don't this, know. <laughs> this 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 name slid across my desk, and I was like, "What does electrified mean?" I was like, that, I, "I'm sorry, that's such a weird name. Why would you call it the electrified G80? There, certainly, there's something more interesting they could have came up with." But anyway, uh, despite the electrified name, which we actually use in the industry to kind of uh, grab as a catch-all for anything that may be a mild hybrid, hybrid EV plug-in. This is a full electric vehicle, and it's one of the few cars that debuted in Shanghai that is coming to the United States. Uh, It's got some pretty good specs here, Craig. Uh, We're talking uh, 265 miles of range on the Korean certification system. That sounds about right for the U.S. I would imagine it's going to land somewhere somewhere in that uh, realm. Uh, They're saying 0 to 60 in 4.9 seconds. It gets some other subtle changes like the revised grill. Um, and it's going to come with standard all-wheel drive, but the uh, the folks over there at Genesis have done a fancy decoupling system so the car can be more efficient when you need, and it'll uh, not send power to all four uh, wheels when you don't need it. Very clever, which is not... I mean, that's fairly common these days. Plenty of other companies do it, but it's still a smart thing to to do, even on an EV like this. Um, what do you think? 265 miles of range, assuming that's what it, the car lands at in the U.S. testing, is that enough? I mean, I almost feel like 300 is the minimum you need these days. I think it's a little bit low, um, though this isn't riding on Hyundai Motor and Genesis is a, a subsidiary of Hyundai Motor. So it's not riding on their dedicated EV platform. Um, so I just think that we knew this car was coming and I don't think it should be surprising that the range rating is that low uh, just because your starting point is a vehicle that was designed primarily to have an engine up front. Uh, so I just think it's not a surprise. So I'm not like, oh, that's not enough. It's a bummer. I just kind of think that's what was expected. Uh, Genesis Mm -hmm. is going to have more electric cars coming that will, I'm sure, surpass 300 miles of range. But I said it once before, Craig, and I'll say it again. The average American does not drive 265 miles a day. Uh, It's probably more like 30 miles one way, maybe at that. I can't recall the actual statistic. But it's going to be plenty as long as you have a place to plug this thing, this this car in every night. It'll be fine. And and especially in the corona corona era, like fewer people are commuting. I mean, I just I've got a hundred thousand miles on my slippers right now because I go from the bed to the <laughs> work desk. <laughs> Don't ever Haven't leave the we house. Haven't we all become the, the sunshine pant enthusiasts? I mean, oh gosh, it I may get much better. I'm wearing a sport coat. <laughs> 
but you don't see <laughs> down below. It's it's pure sweatpants all day. If I have to put you know, jeans on, I deserve hazard pay because it's just <laughs> such an inconvenience. Yeah, the Friday's a special day. I'm like, you know, I'm going to put jeans on just for the show and make it feel like we're not in uh, COVID times. You know, so Friday's right, a get very special, up everybody. Get putting pants on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, exactly. Just to back up for a second, uh, though much is much is taken mentions in the chat. I drive a Gen 1 Volt. Unfortunately, I've never seen that message. I guess about when the engine turns on to, uh, to, oh, okay. yeah. to just burn some fuel to keep the system going. So did, did that mm -hmm. pop up a lot with you or was it pretty rare? No. Because I've no, never it seen was, it either. It was pretty, it was pretty rare um, in that there was a long stint uh, of me owning the car where I seriously didn't put gas in the car. So it was filled. You know, I had filled the tank at some point after probably a, a, a road trip, you know, because it only goes about, uh, what is it, 52 miles is what it's rated for on just battery power. Um and then a, I would say six months in, a little message popped up on the driver cluster saying, hey, we're going to turn the engine on to uh, burn a little bit of fuel and fire up the engine because it's been so long. Um, but it didn't. It wasn't often. It would do that, I don't know, I, I want to say every six months. You know, So in that stint where I wasn't gassing it up very often, I want to say I saw it two or three times. You know, So it wasn't obnoxious or anything, if that's what um, yeah. uh, the YouTube... Uh, questioner was asking yeah yeah definitely it's it's interesting too and it's it's almost there to remind you that hey you can go longer distances than 52 miles or whatever the rated range was because you've got a gasoline engine you can go anywhere you want don't forget yep yep absolutely that was a great car it's not on our list to chat about but i would highly recommend i'll, I'll plug it right now and this isn't sponsored or nothing like that it's just a good car if you're looking to dip your toes into like an electrified car, a Volt can be dirt cheap used and it's a very good car. Yes. And really like what surprises me is that plug-in hybrids are not more popular than they are. I get that they tend to be more expensive because you've basically got to engineer them with two different powertrains and they have to be able to talk to each other and work together. So there's more cost involved, more, more effort involved. But a plug-in hybrid could be the best of both worlds. If you're only commuting 20 miles to work each day, and you've got a car that offers 50 miles or more of electric-only range, you're never buying fuel for that thing, you know, five days a week. Then you still have the flexibility. You want to go 300 miles on the weekend out to your, your cottage at the lake. You can do that as well and not have to worry about charging. So in a, in yeah. a big country like America where everything is spread out, they're like, to me at least, the perfect solution. But I guess I'm missing something because nobody buys them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's unfortunate, but uh, I don't think automakers ever figured out how to market them or explain how they work very well um, to average car buyers because I know when I had my Volt, uh, it was like, oh, so it's electric. And I'm like, no, it's not totally electric. They're like, oh, so it takes gas. Well, it does, but it doesn't just run on gas. Well, how does it work? You know, so it's it's mm -hmm. not an easy thing to explain to somebody, you know, who, and that's not their fault. You know, people don't, not everyone follows the auto industry and knows the ins and outs, and that's totally fine. And that it's somebody else's job who wants to sell that car to help people understand how it works. And if they don't get it, yeah. they're not going to buy it. They're going to jump into a, you know, at the time a Chevy Cruze instead. You know, they just go to the fuel pump and they're done. Yep. Nothing to worry about. Nothing to think about. Uh, mm -hmm. Genesis Electrified G80, least creatively named car in history, perhaps. Um, did we talk zero <laughs> to 60? Only 4.9 seconds. That's plenty fast for a big, comfortable Ooh, sedan. Yeah. yeah. You know, Craig, I, I don't like that revised grill they have going on up front there. It, it It's a... No. Uh, I believe it, it's kind of like a, a closed off version of the uh, standard G80s grill. And I, I think mm -hmm. they tweaked the front end a little bit too uh, for aerodynamics. I think this car looks great when I first saw it, you know, with just its standard uh, internal combustion engine version. This one seems tamer. There's something tame about this car. Um, I can't quite put my finger on it, but I don't like it as much. I haven't noticed um, that. I haven't noticed that. I think it's quite a beautiful car. I mean, what Genesis Design has been able to do in, in just a couple of years, their their designs are like, they're assertive, they're adventurous, but they're also, they're not gaudy or over the top. You look at like a Lexus and they're just like screaming at you, right? 
you don't get that with Genesis. I mean, they've got they're yeah. very avant garde, but they're not over the top, which is a good place to be, I think. Oh yeah, it's definitely yeah. refreshing. And I've said before, Genesis cars are are beautiful in my opinion in general but just something about this one I, it's something about that front end um i'd have to put them side by side and i haven't so i can't like draw a circle the differences very well uh you know maybe mm -hmm. that's my weekend activity you know with lots of partying going on and everyone <laughs> you know i'll email out you know like everyone circle the differences on the g80 electrified or, or something you know does that sound fun i don't know it's probably terrible Send it out, yes. I know, like in Highlights Magazine <laughs> or something. When you were a kid, you can do the yeah. word search or the spot the differences. <laughs> uh, yeah. But the, this Genesis supports 400 to 800 volt charging, and they're saying it'll it'll take go up to 80% charge in just about 22 minutes when you're using the fastest supported charging, which ain't too bad. Um, and it also features onboard electrical generator capability at up to 3.6 kilowatts. So that allows you to, you know, if you're, lose power at your house or something you can plug your freezer in and then you don't lose everything you got stored in there you plug your fridge in watch tv whatever so that's that's pretty cool and you know obviously it's, we see it's that with of, other electrics it's kind of a ford f-150 craig what what you know that vehicle exactly. has that too so Absolutely. really genesis built an f-150 everybody so that's kind of cool <laughs> just a smoother and more comfortable one that doesn't tow as much but <laughs> yeah <laughs> no, it actually, uh, to, to be serious, the uh, the generator that this has on board has more power than the uh, most powerful version that Ford will install in the F-150 hybrid. Uh, so there's a lot of power here. I, I believe Genesis had a fact sheet. And I don't have it on me, unfortunately, but it, uh, it showed uh, how, what you could power with this much uh, electricity on board if you used that function. But that's a pretty cool thing that these EVs are doing uh, to just be like, oh, did your power go out and you want to power your fridge still? Like, okay, well, the car yeah. will do that. Like, that that's a yeah. neat little baked in element that I would have never thought of because as I've said on, I think every episode, I'm not an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> Neither am I. I can barely balance my checking account, much less do calculus. So... <laughs> And you think I, I started college wanting to be a mechanical engineer, and then I hit calculus, and I said, nope. And then you cried. Here. Then you cried. Uh, then I cried. <laughs> yes, because I don't get I along have friends who cried. Well. <laughs> I yeah. have friends who cried in that program, and I looked at it, and I'm like, I'd cry too, and that's not even my major. <laughs> yeah, right? Just thinking about it gives you stress. <laughs> but yeah, yes. that's no, to your point, you. a major benefit. Major benefit of EVs, you can power other stuff. And with 3.6 kilowatts of juice in this Genesis, maybe we'll see construction workers start to buy them and park them on the job site so they can run their air hammers and air compressors and all that other stuff, saws and jackhammers and whatever. Probably not. But well, you never know. Maybe. You never know. You never know. Before we move on, uh, Silver Demon 92 in the chat says, I was actually thinking that this grill better integrates with the rest of the design compared to the standard G80 or G90 sedans. The grill seems more tame compared to the standard G80 and G90 sedan. So better integrated, but perhaps more tame. And I, I could definitely see that. Yep, this, I uh, agree. That is... That's very astute of uh, you to point out, uh, internet commenter. I, I like your take on that. Um, and I think that explains why I may not like the car overall as much because I kind of like that punchier, uh, more jagged uh, grill on the uh, standard vehicle. Um, so that's astute. Good observation. Yeah. You get a sticker. You get a sticker. I'll mail it to you. <laughs> yeah, mail in the mail because unless we can email it or something. I'm not sure yes. how the internet works. I'm not good with computers. No, but no. next up, a Ford. And it's not a concept, I understand. It's sort of a hatchback wagon SUV. It's called the Evos. And I have no freaking idea how you classify this. What the hell is it? <laughs> I could see it. It's I, partially a sedan. I, it's kind <laughs> of a wagon, but I don't know. It's it's uh, all of the above, uh, D, all of the above. Uh, yeah, this one, what an interesting thing that Ford showed over there in China. And, and to back up, if, if people have been following along at theroadshow.com over the past year, um, we've had some stories that Ford was planning some sort of uh, vehicle that fit this description. 
um, to replace the fusion here and also in Europe, because in Europe it's called the Mondeo and they announced the Mondeo will not be any longer. The Mondeo and fusion were the same car. Um, I asked Ford and point blank, they said, nope, this is only for China. You know, so the jury's still out on if that kind of car actually exists that will come to the U.S. But this one, as you see here, is not coming to the U.S., uh, as Ford has said. But yeah, what a what a mishmash of things. But honestly, it's it's cool, Craig. I think it looks really good. And that interior kind of I don't blows mind away either, yeah. a Mach-E. Yes, it's because it's a 27-inch 4K resolution pillar to pillar to pillar screen. And... That looks freaking cool. And the rest of the interior, too. The screen is very well integrated, right? It's not just stuck on there and taped on the corners and screwed in place, whatever, just thrown in there. It's integrated into the rest of the design. It looks great. Yeah, and uh, I, I we would love to show you more photos, but I guess the trend in Shanghai was just give them two photos because so many debuts came and there was like three pictures average on each of each car <laughs> so we That's have why we uh, don't have any like, b-roll to share it's only stills <laughs> yeah yes so and we have just the front i don't even none of us know what the rear of this car looks like uh i haven't seen a single photo of the rear end all we've seen are the front and it looks kind of and if if uh anyone out there watching it. they don't want on, you to see it <laughs> yeah if, if anyone out there watching on youtube or facebook uh, this car traces back to a concept car, and if you drop what it is, uh, maybe Craig will give you a coupon for a free something, or I don't know, a coupon for groceries or something. Uh, there is a concept car that this traces back to. Definitely. So just to back up for a second, you actually reached out to Ford, and it was remarkable that um, not that they said that this is not a replacement for the Fusion in Mondale, but that they actually responded and didn't just say, we don't comment on future product. It's remarkable that they gave you a real answer, <laughs> right? Yeah, that's, but you know what that says is, is that that is the answer that in no way, shape or form should we expect to see this car in the US. So uh, grateful yeah. for the straightforwardness from Ford PR. Thank you. We always appreciate that. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, lots of tech, I would assume, in this car. We know it's going to have over-the-air software updates, at least for the infotainment system. Um, and it's going to offer Blue Cruise, which I believe we talked about in last week's show, which is, of course, Ford's new hands-free driving aid that works Blue's a lot clues. like GM Super Cruise. Yes, Blue's Clues, Blue's right? Clues. You'll get a notebook yeah. and a dog comes with it. It's really cool. Yeah, not, not perhaps the best name of all, but... Uh, yeah, Blue Cruise, so that should work on divided uh, highways, limited access, uh, and enable you to drive hands-free. So that's always, that. that's like with Super Cruise, that's amazing on long trips. It really is. It just takes so much of the stress out of driving. Um, and they're yeah, saying this, yeah. this Evo should arrive uh, in dealers in the coming months. So this is like fully baked and ready to go. Yeah, that I... Uh... We don't have any powertrain specs on this either, or I didn't see any. Maybe perhaps some has come out this week as the show has gone on, uh, but we we didn't get anything other than some uh, basic details on it. And I mean, I guess quite frankly, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because it will not be coming here again. And I think that's a shame. Hopefully something Sad like this trombone. does come. Sad trombone indeed. Sad trombone. Maybe it can be a new Ford Edge, which is something Kevin B commented yeah. on in the chat. And Silver mm. Demon 92 also says, I prefer this interior layout over the existing giant tablet of the Mach E. And I would agree 100%. When you see the giant totally not iPad alone. stuck to the dashboard, um, it looks kind of like an afterthought. Whereas the interior mm -hmm. of this Ford, Evan just pulled it up, beautiful 27 inch 4K resolution display, display that is actually part of the design. It's not just stuck on there. So again, if you are watching live, leave your questions or comments in that chat room. Uh, we'll do our best to answer those as we go on. One more concept to talk about, Sean. Another SUV from Honda. Not much to say about it, though, unfortunately. Yeah, I, again, I, I joked earlier, it must have been the theme was show it and say nothing and only show one or two <laughs> photos. Uh, because... Uh, this I is think all there's literally one this photo one. of this. Yeah. <laughs> no, it is. This is it. You know, our, our poor producer, Evan, he's like, hey, we're the Honda photos. And we're like, nope, that's it. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, we so just, we have to get him like is... a random B-roll clip he can run of like birds flying or or like some traffic <laughs> on the highway or something, so he can just roll something in to show people because that's all we've got. Yeah. One photo. Yeah, seriously, seriously. But uh, this is called the uh, this is the SUV E prototype concept. Uh, if people have been following uh, Honda's recent uh, vehicle launches, this honestly, Craig, looks like an electric version of the new global Honda HRV. And that HRV isn't coming to the US, but this honestly looks like a electric version of that car. Um, hmm. I don't know if there are actually any ties to that. That is nowhere near confirmed. That's me just maybe... Uh, connecting some dots and I'm probably wrong, <laughs> but um, that's what it looks like to me, at least. BNSH in the chat says the Honda SUV is a RAV4. <laughs> I, I, Which, I mean, yeah, I could see that. There, there are some similarities in the overall shape to the RAV4. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Maybe, maybe an electric I, CRV. Yeah. I mean, and design wise, this car, it's fine. It's nowhere near as interesting as the Lincoln or or the uh, the Ford Evos we just talked about. It's perfectly mm -hmm. fine. Uh, it looks like like an SUV should. Um, beyond <laughs> that, what do we know about this thing? I mean, there's not much to say. Third generation connectivity feature called Honda Connect. Yes. What does that even mean? Um, I don't know. I I. <laughs> We, I don't know. Honda wanted to be super quiet about this one, um, perhaps because it has no chance of coming to the U.S. But um, on that note, actually today, or, or perhaps uh, I don't know how the time, uh, you know, adjustments come between Japan and the U.S. I don't know that off the top of my head. But uh, their their new CEO actually gave a presentation, and they were talking about their uh, plan to phase out the internal combustion engine at the company by 2040. They also said they have a new electric vehicle platform called the E-Architecture, and that's coming to North hmm. America in the latter half of this decade. So we're going to see a lot more Honda EVs, and they've been very, very slow on this front, at least in my opinion. You know, they have the Honda E, that mm -hmm. amazing hatchback they sell yes. uh, in other parts of the world that Honda, if anyone from Honda is watching... Bring it here or just let me buy one. I want one. I want that car. <laughs> I, I, I want Sean, one. Sean, you are a longtime but, Honda fan too. And you're you're currently yes. on the prowl for a Honda, if I'm not mistaken. Tell the audience <laughs> what you're looking for and why. Yeah, if anyone out there I'm is putting watching, you on the spot, maybe, bud. Uh, yeah. All right. On the spot. I will I will bake someone a tray of brownies if they help me find a Honda Prelude. Fifth generation type SH preferred. No silver has to be a manual transmission. Got it. Brownies are on the line. Do it. Thanks. <laughs> Cause but you used to own a Prelude, right? And now you're looking to recapture that magic. Yeah, I did. I owned, well, I, I owned you a two, of two of them. Two of them. I thought you, you only had one. No, I had two. I had a, if, if there are Honda nerds watching, I had a fourth generation Honda Prelude. Then I had a fifth generation. I would like another fifth generation personally, even though I like them both equally. Uh, I don't know. Just, I was always drawn to them and, and it's not the only kind of car I'm drawn to. I, I have a Holden special vehicles polo on and then over my shoulder is a Nissan GTR frame. So it's, I'm scatterbrained. But the the Prelude was just a car I kind of fell in love with, you know, from a younger age. I just thought it was super cool, super cool. I suggested the other day you consider an Acura uh, RSX Type S. Ha has that has my suggestion moved the needle at all for you? You know, I talked really to our car. colleague. I talked to our colleague John Wong, and I I asked okay. for his opinion because he is a uh, another Honda enthusiast. And, uh, you know, he was like, it's good, you know, but he made a very valid point and not against the car, but more for me, you know, saying if, if your heart lies with a prelude an RSX type S would probably just be a stopgap. And that was a hundred percent true. So I appreciate the suggestion, Craig, but I'm going to keep looking for a prelude. But you get that high winding K series two liter. How do you beat that? You get a six speed stick done. <sighs> Newer, more yeah, features. Better. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know about I better. Guess not. I think it's, it's not a bad car. It's not a bad car. I would own one if I had thousands of dollars growing on the tree in the backyard, <clears throat> but I don't. I haven't found the seed for that yet, unless you're growing that in your garden. Uh, unfortunately, I have not found that either. <laughs> Otherwise, oh, okay. I'd be sharing it. Bummer. With Bummer. <laughs> but back to the <laughs> Honda SUV e prototype. Sammy Lessman in the chat says it's perfectly bland. <laughs> I laughed when I first read that. It's pretty funny. It's like a nice bowl of ice cream. Wouldn't you agree, everybody? It's a bowl of ice cream. <laughs> it's just, it's it, I'm there sure on the it's counter. wonderful. Yes, it's just, you know, it's, it's vanilla is tasty. There's nothing wrong with it, you know, but, you know, there's no, uh, you know, nuts or chocolate sauce or anything like that. You know, it's, it's there and it'll get yeah, the job right? done, I'm sure. <laughs> Silver Demon 92 again commenting, wow, that is an awesome car. The Prelude, I had, I too had two fourth gen S, fourth gen and S and an SI 4WS. Sounds like another Prelude fan. It's quite a lot of oh, Preludes. Oh, excellent. Very cool. Uh, if, if you're still watching, I had a 93 VTEC model. So it actually had the H22 in the fourth gen. Uh, that was that those are harder to come across rather than an SI or a four wheel steer model. So super cool. Help me find one, a fifth gen. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but, but back to our Honda concept here. Do we know if this is coming to the US? Probably not. They haven't said, and if I'm going to follow my gut, Craig, Probably not. <laughs> um, yeah. We do know that Honda has two EVs that are coming to the United States. Those are actually going to be based on General Motors platforms, and they're going to use the Altium battery technology. Honda and GM, I believe it was last year, signed a sweeping North American alliance where they're going to work a lot closer together. And uh, the first two EVs that we will see here, I mean, there's the Clarity EV that sold in some uh, cities and states in the U.S., but that's uh, not a 50 state EV anymore, but I could be wrong on that. Uh, mm -hmm. Likely the, the two EVs coming, one will be for Honda, one will be for Acura, and they'll probably be uh, SUVs. Most likely given current trends. Well, very good. That just about does it for the Shanghai coverage of this week's episode of Roadshow Recap. But... We've got some poll results to get to. So we were asking oh boy. what you preferred of the concept cars that were shown at the show. We've got the Audi A6 e-tron, the Lincoln Zephyr Reflection, and of course the Honda SUV e prototype. You guys responded, and here are the riveting results. Evan, if you've got those handy, throw them up on screen so we can see them all. Drum roll. I'm thinking the Lincoln's going to win. That's my guess. It's the Lincoln but or the Audi, I'm going to guess. It ain't going to be the Honda, I'm sorry. It's perfectly <laughs> bland, as, as <laughs> Hunter Sammy said. So I don't know what Evan is doing. He gets paid in canned goods, and it shows, okay, host he's, says Lincoln 50%. Is he putting him in our private chat here? Maybe that's what he's doing. He may be doing that, yes. So sorry you can't see that on your screen, uh, but the Lincoln looks to be in the lead with 50% and the Audi concept at 25%. All other uh, vehicles we talked about made up 25% of your voting. So we need more of you to vote next time because I'm sure not everybody- We need everybody... more of you to watch too. <laughs> yeah, come and join us. We talked about ice cream. We talked about brownies. I mean, clearly this is just like a bakery show now. So if you like cake or something, come eat a piece of cake and watch us talk about cars. <laughs> Yeah, and we talked about old Hondas. Yeah, How that's, that? that's a good Friday. That's a good Friday, for sure. Yes. And we also had a bonus because we ran a very similar poll on the Roadshow Instagram page. And Evan, I'm going to ask you again, do you have those results? Okay, there we are. So we asked, do you like or you don't like the Ford Evos? 69% of you said, yes, give me that Evos. Only 31 passed mm -hmm. on it. It's about what I would have expected. It's a pretty good looking car. I agree. The Audi, 90% oh, wow. to 10%. That is a whew, landslide. Y'all love that wow. car. And the Lincoln Zephyr, almost as dominant. 84% thought it was nice. 16% not so nice. But that's about what I would have expected. So, Sounds about right to yeah. me. Sounds about right to me. That's that's kind of what I figured. 
Uh, I figured those would be the uh, the best or, or the most appealing cars that came out of Shanghai, and I'd have to agree. You know, unless you're a big fan of of the Honda prototype concept SUV, <laughs> which I don't know why you would be. <laughs> How do you go from building an RSX Type S to that? It just seems. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. That's another. That's another show, Craig. <laughs> we don't have time uh, for that. Yeah. Well, we'll save it for next time. What else, though? We've got a bunch of other stuff aside from Shanghai coverage that went live on the Roadshow.com. You cover the news. You've got your fingers on the pulse, Sean. What should our viewers be checking out on our site this week? Well, since we went through a ton of news, we actually decided to highlight some of the really cool cars that uh, we drove this week. Uh, we uh, had managing editor Steve Ewing, who drove the new 2022 Porsche 911 GT3. And uh, that's over on theroadshow.com. You can find his review. And uh, essentially, he says, this is what this car should be. A uh, huge fan of it. He walked away mighty impressed. And for good reason, because it's kind of hard to stumble into a bad Porsche 911. Uh, but I mean, this right, one like sounds the like the review it... <laughs> writes itself practically. Oh yeah, it's amazing. For sure. Done. If you can afford one, yeah. go buy it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, like maybe cross shop it with two other cars, but it, it's amazing. And good job, Porsche. I'm going home. <laughs> yeah. Very and cool. Then, uh, very cool. Yes, very cool indeed. That's over at theroadshow.com for anyone who wants to read about that. And then we also got our hands on the 2022 Hyundai Tucson. Uh, and our social media editor, Daniel Golson, said that's the segment leader now, which those, them's fighting words, as we like to say, uh, to the RAV4, CRV, uh, Ford Escape, and Equinox. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a... That's a contested segment to say that uh, this is a segment leader now. But you know what? It looks like it very well may be. Craig, I don't know if you've driven it. I haven't driven it yet, uh, but nope. it looks super nope. promising. It, it does. I love the interior. I'm not as big a fan of the exterior, which is a bit sort of, I, I don't want to say hatchety, but it's got this chiseled <laughs> look to it that um, I don't necessarily love. But that cabin is gorgeous. Totally. Yep, I agree. I agree. And then one other thing, if anyone's looking for something to read, 2023 Cadillac Lyric, the production model, uh, debuted this week. Uh, it basically looks like the concept car, which is nice to see. That's refreshing. Uh, very good. And uh, look at that. There's its light-up grill. Pretty neat. Uh, it's going to start at $60,000. Um, so that is... Uh, pretty decent, I'd say, for Cadillac's first EV, and it looks properly luxurious Absolutely. inside. I don't care for the exterior. I don't know about you, Craig. It's it's not my favorite, uh, but important car for Cadillac nonetheless. Yeah, it's definitely not my favorite. The, the front end, I can I can live with. The back end, there's mm -hmm. a bit much going on. But yeah. yeah, for sixty grand, though, it seems like a pretty good value for a Cadillac. I, I agree. I agree. We'll have to see what comes of it. It should be launching this year. So for more information on any of the stories we talked about in today's show, there are convenient links right in the description box below. So make sure you check those out. And at this point, I think the show has gone on for long enough. The weekend is here. And let's be honest, I kind of want to be done working. So I think we're going to call it. Yes. Here. 100 yeah. percent. I agree. And I'm tired of talking with Craig at this point. Just kidding. How do you think I feel living with me? I mean, <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> Anyway, Sean, thank you so much for your help. And of course, we owe a big round of applause to our producer, Evan Miller, for handling all of the technical stuff. And he has earned a sitting ovation from me. Wait, oh, that's, that's not Evan. Who Evan. is this? I'm, I'm rescinding oh. that ovation. <laughs> no, oh. I, the, the check doesn't clear. Uh-uh. Oh. An imposter. Oh, I was, was going to send him a coupon. He said he wanted some pizza. And I was like, yeah, I'll, maybe I'll send him a coupon instead of canned goods. And I'll, we don't. Yeah, what did you do with our Evan? Why aren't we more concerned that Evan has disappeared, Craig? <laughs> we better file a police report. <laughs> or something. Anyway, oh. thank you all so much for watching Roadshow News Recap, where we dissect and discuss the biggest automotive stories of the past week. Again, you can join us for the live broadcast every Friday. It's every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern right here on the Roadshow YouTube channel. 
And with that, thank you again for watching, and I hope you all have a wonderful weekend.